Now we will talk about the conducting tissue of the heart. So human heart is myogenic. Myogenic means it is capable of generating uh, cardiac contraction independent of the uh, brain's input or the nervous input. So it is capable, capable of generating cardiac contraction. without nervous input without nervous input without the help of the nervous system it can generate the cardiac contraction that is myogenic so human heart is myogenic in nature it can generate its own cardiac contraction without the help of the nervous system it shows auto autorhythmicity autorhythmicity means it can um, generate its own rhythm it can generate its own rhythm now as we know our heart beats about 72 times per minute isn't it so it beats about 72 times per minute if it it beats less so to bring it again to this level or suppose if it uh, beats more times in a minute so to bring it again to this level normal beating of the heart that is 72 times per minute so this is maintained by the heart on its own that is auto rhythmicity it is capable or it can generate its own rhythm so according to the need of the body if there is a need for more blood it will beat faster and again it will come to its normal uh, beating that is 72 minutes per uh, 72 times per minute and if the need is less then it will slower down the heart rate that is 70 times so and again it can uh, come it uh, it can come back to its normal state normal heart rate so that is auto rhythmicity so heart is uh, heart shows the auto rhythmicity it can generate its own rhythm Specialized musculature that is called as nodal tissue is distributed in the heart. A specialized muscle that is called as nodal tissue. It is distributed all over the heart. These red colored lines you see here. Those are the nodal tissues or the uh, muscle fibers which help the heart in the contraction. Now a part of it is present. A part of it is present in the upper corner of the right atrium. A part of it is present in the upper corner of the right atrium. This is called as the sinoatrial node. It is called as the SA node or sino, sinoatrial node. It lies at the base of the opening of superior vena cava. So this is the Superior vena cava. And this sinoatrial node, it lies at the base of the superior vena cava. Another mass of nodal tissue that is modified muscular fibers, they are called as autorhythmic fibers or they are also called as conducting tissue. They control the beating of the heart or beating rate of the heart now um, another fibers are there they are called they control the beating of the heart and they are called along with these nodes they are called as the uh, conducting tissue or they are also called as autorhythmic fibers they maintain the rhythm of the heart or they control the rhythm of the heart so they are called as autorhythmic fibers or conducting tissue this conducting tissue or nodal tissue, it consists of SA node, AV node, bundle of His and Purkinje fibers. So this 
conducting tissue it consists of sinoatrial node that is sa node atrioventricular node that is av node also it consists of bundle of his bundle of his and purkinje fibers all these red colored fibers you see here these are the bundle of his these fibers these are bundle of his these are right and left bundles they are divided into right side and the left side of the heart these are right and left branches of the bundle and these are the purkinje fiber fibers further it is divided into purkinje fibers so this sinoatrial node atrioventricular node bundle of his and purkinje fibers together they are called as conducting tissue they control the beating rate of the heart or they control the they control the auto rhythm of the heart they bring about the auto rhythmicity in the heart the heart we know it uh, generates uh, the rhythm on its own so all these fibers all these nodes are helpful for generating its own now we will talk about the conducting system of the heart sa node is present in the right atrium as we saw earlier the sa node sinoatrial node it is present in the right atrium it acts as a pacemaker this sinoatrial node it act, acts as a pacemaker pacemaker means what it generates the contraction it starts the contraction this sa node it starts the contraction Uh, it has the power of generating the contraction it makes the uh, pace for the contraction that's why it is called as pacemaker it generates the contraction in the heart that's why it is called as the pacemaker sa node passes contraction to left ventricle and to av node that is atrioventricular node this atrioventricular node it is present at the base of the right atrium near the intraatric uh, intraatrial uh, septum where the two atrias are separated by the septum at the base of that it is found over there this atrioventricular near the uh, ventric atrioventricular septum and at the base of the intraatricular septum intraatrial septum now this uh, sa node what it does it passes the contraction to the left ventricle it passes the contraction the impulse of contraction to the left atrium from the left atrium it is passed to the uh, left ventricle also so sa node passes contraction to the left ventricle and to the av node here we see it passes the contraction impulse of the contraction to the av node and also to the left ventricle av node is present in the right atrial wall near the base of interatrial septum now this av node as i said it is present at the base of the atrial wall it is present at the uh, base of the right atrial wall and near the intraatrial septum it acts as a pace setter now this sa node we saw it acts as a pacemaker this av node or atrioventricular node it acts as a pace setter pace setter means it sets the speed of the contraction sets speed of contraction this sa node it is pacemaker it generates the contraction and this av node it is a pace setter it sets the speed of the contraction which is generated bundle of his starts from the av node and pass through the interventricular septum now this bundle of his it starts from the av node it starts from the atrioventricular node and it is a uh, further passed into the ventricles bundle of his it starts from the atrioventricular uh, node av node and then it is passed uh, to the ventricles from the interventricular septum this 
the septum or the division which divides both the ventricles left and right ventricles from that septum this bundle of his is passed further in the ventricles it forms two branches right and left bundles one for each ventricle now this bundle of his it divides here it divides and one branch is sent in the left right ventricle and another branch is sent in the left ventricle so this bundle of his divides into two branches right branch right bundle and left bundle each for the um, each bundle for each ventricle one for each ventricle right ventricle has right bundle and left ventricle has left bundle they form a network in ventricular walls called as purkinje fibers now these uh, right and left bundles they further divide into small fibers thread like fibers those are called as purkinje fibers these fibers they make a network in the ventricles these are called as purkinje fibers bundle of his purkinje fibers spread impulses in the ventricles and both contract simultaneously now this bundle of his and these purkinje fibers what they do they spread the impulses all over the ventricles in the right ventricle in the left ventricle they spread the impulses which were started by the uh, sa node sa node we know it starts the contraction the contraction is started in the sa node further it is passed in the av node and from av node it is passed through the bundle of his and through the purkinje fibers these bundle of his and the purkinje fibers they spread the impulse of the contraction all over the ventricles remember the sequence sa node generates the contraction or uh, makes the contraction or produces the contraction impulse and then it is transported in the form of impulse to the av node from av node it is transported to the bundle of his from bundle of his it is further transported to the purkinje fibers so this bundle of his and purkinje fibers they spread these impulses in all over the ventricles all over the ventricles so sa node starts the generation uh, starts the contraction it is a pacemaker so it starts the contraction it generates the contraction av node it sets the speed of the contraction as the uh, as the contractions are generated they are passed to the av node they are passed to the av node this av node is a pace setter it sets the speed of the contraction then these contraction are uh, sent forward in the form of impulses to the bundle of his and from the bundle of his the impulses are sent to the purkinje fibers so these bundle of his and the purkinje fibers they spread the impulses of contraction all over the ventricles they are spread all over the ventricles so the impulses also spread all over now we will discuss about the working mechanism of the heart in this the first topic that we will discuss is cardiac cycle now human heart contracts and relaxes alternately now suppose if this is the heart it is divided into four chambers this is right atrium this is left atrium right ventricle and left ventricle now the heart it contracts and relaxes alternately both the atriums and both the ventricles they do not contract and relax together they uh, contract and relax alternately when the uh, atriums contract the ventricles they relax and when the ventriums contract the at, uh, the atrias they relax so the human heart it contracts and relaxes alternately one after the other after the contraction of uh, atria the ventricles they contract and at the same time the atria they relax when the uh, ventricles relax the atria they contract so it happens alternately it does not happen simultaneously at the same time it doesn't happen it happens alternately
contraction that is also called as systole and relaxation is also called as diastole we have uh, uh, we have talked about this earlier so contraction is called as systole relaxation is called as diastole atria and ventricles contract alternately they can contract one after the other and alternately not simultaneously at the same time one systole followed by a diastole it is called as a single heartbeat or a cardiac cycle when one systole one contraction is followed by the relaxation that is said to be one heartbeat or single heartbeat or it is also called as cardiac cycle it is completed in 0.8 seconds this contraction and relaxation one heartbeat or one cardiac cycle it is completed in 0.8 seconds the average number of heartbeats that is 72 beats are completed in one minute in one minute the human hearts beat about 72 times so 72 beats are completed in one minute this is the average beating of the heart in an adult in a normal adult the next we are going to see that is atrial systole that is as now this atrial systole right atrium receives deoxygenated blood from superior and inferior vena cava this right atrium it receives deoxygenated blood from superior vena cava and this is inferior vena cava so this right atrium it receives blood deoxygenated blood from superior and inferior vena cava left atrium receives oxygenated blood from the pulmonary veins so this left atrium it receives the oxygenated blood from the pulmonary veins these are the pulmonary veins when both the atria are filled completely with the blood the pressure is exerted on the walls of the atria in response to this pressure the sa node gets excited and generates cardiac impulse now in response to the um, pressure of the uh, on the walls of the atria when these two atria they get filled with the blood at that time there is a pressure which is exerted on the walls of the atria and this pressure what it does because of this pressure the sa node the sinoatrial node which is present here at the base of superior vena cava this sinoatrial node it gets excited and it sends or it generates the cardiac impulse this is the sa node the, so the sinoatrial node sends the cardiac impulse cardiac muscles in the atrial wall contract and causes the atrial systole now this sa node it sends uh, impulses to the cardiac muscles which are present in the walls of the atria so these muscles they contract and they bring about the atrial systole atrial contraction blood is pumped into the ventricles and when these atria they contract systole atria uh, during the atrial systole the blood which is there in these atria this blood is poured or this blood is pumped in the ventricles right atria pumps the blood in right ventricle left atria from uh, left atrium pumps uh, pumps the blood in the left ventricle so the blood is pumped in the ventricles blood is prevented from going back to the veins and coronary sinus by the eustachian and thebaian valves respectively now as we have seen the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava they are guarded and these veins they are guarded by the valves so here the superior vena cava is guarded by eustachian valve inferior vena cava is guard, guarded by thebaian valve so these valve they close they get closed as the blood is poured into the ventricles as the blood is pumped into the ventricles they get closed so these valves they close the veins and the coronary sinuses in order to prevent the backflow of the blood the blood shouldn't enter inside the veins and the sinuses again so because of that what uh, for that what happens the valves they close the these openings to prevent the backflow of the blood after completing
completing one systole, the atria goes into diastole. So after country, uh, after completing one contraction or systole, the atria they go into diastole or they relax. In normal condition, atrial systole is for 0.1 second and atrial diastole is for 0.7 seconds. So atrial systole, the contraction of atria is about 0.1 second and the relaxation of these atria is about 0.7 seconds. Now, let us see ventricular systole. That is VS, ventricular systole. The impulse started from the SA node. The impulse, the cardiac impulse which was started from the SA node reaches the AV node. Now, as we have seen, SA node is situated here. The AV node is situated at the base of the septum of these auricles and the ventricles. So, this is the AV node. So, this uh, impulse, it reaches to the AV node. SA node passes the impulse to the AV node. AV node gets excited, atrioventricular node. It gets excited and sends the impulse to the bundle of his. Now, we have seen that there are, uh, from these uh, atrioventricular uh, node, atrioventricular node, there is a muscle fiber which goes into the walls of the ventricle. That is called as bundle of his. And when it goes into this uh, interventricular septum, it divides into two. One branch goes into the right ventricle and another branch goes into the left ventricle. So, left and right branches of the bundle of his. So, what happens? The AV node gets excited. It passes the impulse. It sends the impulse to the bundle of his. And from the bundle of his, the impulse is then sent to the Purkinje fibers. Now, these bundle of his, they uh, further get divided into fiber-like structures and those are called as the Purkinje fibers. So, from these, the impulse travels in the Purkinje fibers. And these Purkinje fibers, they spread the impulse all over the walls of ventricles. They are spread all over the walls of uh, ventricles. So, as uh, the impulse is passed to the Purkinje fibers, these Purkinje fibers, they spread the impulse all over the ventricles. Ventricular walls contract and this causes ventricular systole. Now, as this impulse is spread all over the ventricles, the ventricular walls, they contract and this causes the ventricular systole. Ventricular systole is, uh, happens over here or it causes the ventricular systole. Right ventricle pumps the deoxygenated blood into the pulmonary trunk. So, right ventricle, it pumps the deoxygenated blood as the ventricles they contract. The right ventricle, it pumps deoxygenated blood in the pulmonary trunk. And the left ventricle, it pumps oxygenated blood in the aorta. This left ventricle, it pumps the oxygenated blood in the aorta. During the ventricular systole, the cuspid valves close both atrioventricular apertures to prevent the flow of the blood, uh, to prevent uh, blood flow into the atria again. Now what happens as we know here, these uh, atria and ventricles, they are separated by the atrioventricular apertures here. These, uh, these are the atrioventricular apertures and these apertures they have the cuspid valves in the right ventricle uh, in the right side they have uh, tricuspid valve and in the left side they have bicuspid valve so these cuspid valves what they do they close these apertures when the blood is pumped from the ventricles at that time, these cuspid valves, they close the apertures to the atria so that the blood will not flow again inside the atria. It will flow in the pulmonary trunk from the right ventricle and in the aorta from the left ventricle and it, it will not flow again in the atrias. So, these cuspid valves, they close both the apertures, the atrioventricular apertures and to prevent the backflow of the blood again in the atria.
and here as these uh, valves these cuspid valves they get closed their lub sound is heard as these cuspid valves tricuspid and bicuspid valves they close the apertures of the atria and ventricles there is a sound made by them and that sound is a lub sound so in normal conditions <coughs> in normal conditions ventricular systole lasts for 0.3 seconds and ventricular diastole lasts for 0.5 seconds in normal conditions the ventricular systole contraction of ventricles it lasts for 0.3 seconds and relaxation that is diastole ventricular diastole it uh, lasts for about uh, 0.5 seconds during ventricular diastole semi lunar valves are closed and prevents the back flow of blood from the pulmonary trunk and systemic aorta into the ventricles again now when the blood is pumped from the ventricles after the pumping of the blood when these uh, ventricles they relax when the diastole takes place at that time what happens the valves which are present in the pulmonary trunk at the opening of pulmonary trunk and the systemic aorta into the ventricles near that opening there are valves that those are called as semi lunar valves so these valves they close the openings in order to prevent the back flow of the blood into the ventricles again so when these valves they close at that time a sound is made and that is the dub sound so when when we say that the heart makes a sound that is lub dub sound so these are the sound made by the closure of these valves cuspid valves when they close they make a lub sound and when the uh, semi lunar valves they close they make a dub sound for about 0.4 seconds both atria and ventricles are in diastole so this is called as this condition is called as the joint diastole or complete diastole now for about 0.4 seconds both the atria and the ventricles they both go in the diastole condition and this condition is called as joint diastole or complete diastole now the cardiac cycle is about 0.8 seconds cardiac cycle is about 0.8 seconds the total volume of the blood pumped during one ventricular systole is called as stroke volume when the blood is pumped by the ventricles during one systole one contraction that volume of the blood is called as the stroke volume and it is approximately of about 70 milliliters so in one systole the ventricles they pump about 70 milliliters of blood now the cardiac output cardiac output is the volume of the blood pumped out per minute and it is calculated by stroke volume multiplied by heart rate so stroke volume is our 70 ml and heart rate is about 72 times per minute so if we multiply these we get the cardiac output that is 5040 ml per minute 5040 milliliters per minute so this is the cardiac output cardiac output is the volume of the blood which is pumped out of the heart per minute which is pumped out of the ventricles per minute so that is the cardiac output that is stroke volume it is calculated by stroke volume multiplied by heart rate and the answer which we get or the output which we get that is the cardiac output now this uh, contraction and relaxation of the uh, atria and ventricles it is shown with the help of a, a diagrammatic representation so suppose now here suppose this is a timeline this is a timeline from here it starts 0 0.1 second 0.2 seconds 0.3 0.4 0.5 0.6 
0 0.7 and 0 0.8, 0 0.9 and 1.0 seconds. This is time in seconds. This is time in seconds. Now, as we know, the atrial systole is about 0 0.1 seconds. So here, this 0 0.1 seconds, here the atrial systole takes place. Atrial systole is about 0 0.1 second. Atrial systole takes place. And atrial diastole is about 0 0.7 seconds. So here, from here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. So here, this is the atrial diastole. It is about 0 0.7 seconds. This is the atrial diastole. Now, as we know, the ventricular systole is about 0 0.3 seconds. So from here, the ventricular systole starts. This is the ventricular systole. It is about 0 0.3 seconds. And the vent ventricular diastole is about 0 0.5 seconds. So here, this is the ventricular, ventricular diastole, it is about 0 0.5 seconds and for about 4 seconds, 0 0.4 seconds, for about 0 0.4 seconds, these both atria and ventricles, both of them go for about joint diastole this is for about 0 0.4 seconds so in this diagrammatic representation the uh, contraction and relaxation that is systole and uh, diastole of the ventric uh, ventricles and the atria is explained now from here again the atrial systole starts 0 0.1 second again the atrial systole starts so, in this way, the contraction and relaxation of the atria and the ventricles take place. Again, the, it is continued by the ventricle systole, ventricle diastole, atrial diastole and joint diastole. So, in this way, the cycle continues. So, this is the diagrammatic representation of the uh, atrial and, atrial, atria and ventricle.